So I did double threshold training for 15 weeks last year to see if it would get me fitter and faster than ever before. It was incredible, tiring and physically tough, but the real question is, was it worth it for the average runner like myself? Well, today we're gonna to be sharing exactly how I found it. If you aren't aware of double threshold training, it's been made famous over the past decade by the Inga Britstons, who have had great success with it. However, it's a model that's been used before them, and as time has gone on, more and more people are jumping into that model of training. Now, when I did it, I had to make some adaptions and I released a video on that last year to show how I had put it into my training. I'll make sure at the end of this video to leave a link so you can see exactly how I was doing it. However, for the benefit of this video, I'll give a very brief explanation so that you guys have some kind of understanding so that when we get onto the points, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Double threshold training often comprises of two days where you're doing two threshold sessions, one in the morning, one in the evening. And then within that training cycle, you'll also do a third workout usually, well, if you follow the Inga Britstons on a weekend where they're doing a more race specific session when they're in their competition phase. So with the double threshold sessions they're very controlled efforts usually measured by lactate monitors so they can test the lactate in the blood they just take a pinprick of blood put it in the monitor and it tells them what level their lactate's at. Now for me I had to make two main adaptions to this to fit it into my own training. Number one I could only do one double day a week rather than two so I was just for the 15 weeks doing one threshold session in the morning and evening I wasn't being able to do two and my other race specific session as I was training for London Marathon was marathon specific we all know like the Inga Britstons and other runners that are using it depending on what they're training for use that third session a week for their race specific stuff well mine ended up being marathon specific and the second thing that I've got to mention is I was testing and monitoring my efforts by heart rate rather than lactate because I didn't have a lactate monitor which isn't as accurate it gives you a good guide but it's not quite as good to measure as a lactate monitor itself. And a very final point to note is that in the final six, seven, eight weeks of that training block that I was doing leading into London Marathon, I swapped out double threshold days for special blocks. Now, if you don't know what a special block is, that's another type of workout in itself. Very similar in terms of controlled efforts, morning and evening workouts or specific work. But I've got to say special blocks, I did find harder than double threshold days. I'm a glutton for punishment, but I've got to say that I just wanted to put that out there so that you guys are aware I was then alternating in the final six weeks double threshold special block double threshold special block so now you have that overall information how did it benefit my running ability would I do it again and would I recommend it well here's what I learned number one it's a much more controlled style of training when I go out to do a workout if it's just a single workout of a week I'll go out there and I'll give it my best you know I'll go out there I'll work hard I'll keep it controlled because it's important uh, that you keep your form and you work hard, but you keep everything under control, but you do give it some gusto. You know, you really do want to do your best in that workout. Now, when you're doing double threshold days, that mindset has to change because number one, you're doing two workouts in a day. And number two, the morning session is meant to be a lot more controlled and the evening session still is controlled, uh, but you can let the reins off a little bit more and go a little bit harder. Now, in terms of lactate, this won't mean much to too many people, but if you're measuring lactate in the morning session, you want your the lactate in the blood to be around two millimole. And then in the evening, it's around three, 3.5. That's kind of a model that a lot of people follow. Uh, for me, when I was doing heart rate, the replication of that, I guess, or the effort levels I was trying to achieve was 150s heart rate uh, in the morning, which realistically uh, isn't, it is and around my marathon pace effort uh, or my marathon heart rate. My paces are a bit quicker, not too much, um, but it isn't too dissimilar to that. And then in the evening, it was in the low 160s. If I was to go out and do a workout now, like I'm training right now, my heart rate will probably average Average in the 160s for that workout. So you can see there that both of them will be slightly less uh, than the effort that I'd be going in to go and put a singular workout in. It's much more controlled and much more energy needs to go into it to make sure you maintain that controlled level. Second thing I learned that was really, really massive was recovery time. Recovery off the back of double threshold days was incredibly hard. Now, I would either get this really right or really wrong, and I'll tell you how it would impact me. My training would go as follows. Monday would be a marathon-specific session. Tuesday would be an easy day. And then I'd do my double threshold session on a Wednesday. I'd take a full rest day on a Thursday. I'd do an easy day on a Friday, and then I'd do my long run on a Saturday. Now, often what I find is even though I took a full rest day on the Thursday, my easy run on the Friday, I still feel a lot of fatigue from 
um, from that double threshold day. And sometimes, just sometimes, if I either hadn't prepared very well for Wednesday, like if I hadn't eaten enough, uh, ready for that th uh, Wednesday, or if I hadn't eaten well in the day, leading into that evening session, or if I basically was more fatigued than normal, then my Saturday long run would be affected as well. And I've never experienced that before. And that was something that didn't go throughout the 15 weeks. Like I would really find it could be hit and miss as to how well I was prepared. If I prepare well, then my Saturday long run would be fine. But if I wasn't, uh, it would often be affected by fatigue. And what I noticed very quickly is that the rest of the training could be affected for an average runner like myself and you uh, massively if we don't take this recovery seriously. It does take a lot out of our bodies and it does take a long time to get used to. Throwing in a positive now, number three, I felt very, very strong in and around that threshold pace and effort. When I was training last year, my top end uh, threshold work was being done in and around that 5.25 to 5.35 per mile. And there was a lot of situations in training and in racing where I just felt quite bulletproof at that pace. I felt very, very strong. It was really interesting because I really found that that particular area of running, you know, that threshold that we're really working a lot of, and naturally, if you think about it logically, we're working more threshold uh, in the week now that we're doing double threshold work. Um, that became a real strength of mine. I felt strong in races. Race performances went up. In terms of how I was able to play tactics, how I was able to race itself, how I didn't drop pace during a race, how I just felt strong all round. I'm not saying my range of paces got really strong because it was interesting. It very much became that area where I was really strong at. Other areas, not so much, but I really did find that 525 to 535 per mile range that I was training a lot in became such a strength for me. And I often found myself feeling really, really good when I was in workouts towards the end of the 15 weeks and that translated well into races. And number four, I really did find that I lost a little bit of top end speed. Now, my suspicion for this is that my race-specific session that I was doing for the 15 weeks was marathon-based, so there was a lot of marathon work and in and around that area. So very much my training was controlled between sort of that 5.25-25 in up and around that 6.610 per mile. And within that area, that's where I felt really, really strong. But I really did find that I lost a fair bit off the top. I felt like leg turnover when I just felt very strong in that realm and a little bit weaker around the outside. Um, the top end, yeah, that was, I lost my kick. When I was racing, I felt really good at that pace. As I've just alluded to, I felt like bulletproof, invincible if I was running there. But I did find that if I wanted to kick, uh, I could mildly surge and that felt really good and it felt good to be able to push during a race, but I could never really get into that final gear. I lost it. That's what it felt like. Now, as I said, my suspicion is because I was doing marathon specific work. If that was replaced with a five and 10K session, then I'd probably find the opposite. I'd probably find my uh, my top end speed was amazing and then my lower end speed became a little bit more sluggish. Who knows, That was that is probably the reason. But when I was putting this video together, that's one thing that popped into my head and that's something that really was profound last year. When I finished those 15 weeks, I thought, gosh, I really need to get back into some speed because I really do feel like I've just lost that edge. And number five, my overriding feeling when I finished the training block was that I didn't get as fast as I think I was or thought I was going to get. I know that sounds quite stupid. And if you think about it, 15 weeks is only one training block. So we're not going to make humongous jumps within one training block. But I did come off the back of it and think, this is a whole new style of training that I'm trying out. We're watching all these incredible runners hit the world stage and do incredible things based on this model of training, uh, especially the Inga Britsons, but lots of other people at this point are copying that training and doing great things. We're seeing lots of research into the double threshold training as to how beneficial it is, working that threshold. And I just came away from it thinking, ah, uh, I didn't quite get as much out of it as I thought I would. Now, my suspicion, again, just like the previous point, my suspicion here is that it's because I wasn't doing two double threshold days and I was only doing one. And to get maximum benefits, I really should have been doing both of them. That's the logical explanation. And that's kind of what I'm telling myself. But at the same time, I suppose when we embark on something new and we see all of this magical, this training does this, this training does this, look at these guys, they're flying because they do this type of training. 
you kind of hope that it will rub off on you. And yep, I PB'd in the distances, I didn't in the marathon sadly, but in the 10K I did, but I didn't take quite as much off as I thought I would. And to be brutally honest with you, I'm having more success now with my recent coach and my current training than I did back then. And so giving you all that information, the final point that I want to make is that if I was to commit to this type of training again, then the first thing that I would definitely do is make sure that I could do two double days, because I really do feel like just doing the one didn't do it justice. You've heard what I've said about how I found it without doing the second double day and how I found losing top end speed and how I found that I got really strong in that particular threshold area. It's got lots of benefits and I see massive promise with it, but the recovery time was such a major thing and I think just coming off the back of doing 15 weeks where I did just one double day just makes me sit there and think to get the most out of this I've got to commit to the two. If I did the two and then I did the race specific session it would make the world of difference but sadly in this case I wasn't able to. So I think if you're going to commit to this type of thing and you're considering starting it it's definitely worth starting with just the one day to get used to it but if you're thinking about doing it long term full-time style training, it's definitely worth doing two days. So there we go, those are my thoughts on double threshold training. After 15 weeks, it was incredible, it was such an amazing experience. Would I do it again? Yes, if I could commit to doing more. But at the moment, I'm having much more success as I've just alluded to with my current coach. So we're gonna stick with what we're doing for now. If you're considering trying it, as I just said, definitely worth starting off with one day and just ease into it and do a bit more research. I'm gonna make sure I leave links to other videos that I've produced on this topic uh, at the end of the video so you guys can read a little bit more about height how I integrated it uh, first time last year. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. I'll see you in the next one. Until then.